Catherine Grant. I am a friend, a journalist, a student, and a cancer survivor. When I was seven years old, I was diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer called osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma, which is a malignant bone tumor, in other words, a cancer of the bone. And um, the treatment for that, as you very well know, is chemotherapy and then surgery to take it out. Um, there's nothing that you eat or drink or anything like that. Um, these are very rare tumors. There's only about um, roughly, let's say, 700 cases of osteosarcoma per year in the whole country. So it's, a, it's a ex extremely rare type of disease and condition. Miss Kate complained about her knee hurting. Um, we took it easy. She stayed off of it for a couple weeks and it was still really bothering her. She started limping. So um, we went and saw the family doctor. The doctor wasn't sure. He had x-rays and that afternoon he called us and said, um, you need to go see a specialist. We found something on her, her leg bone. After that, she had an MRI on her leg um, and then the biopsy, which um, confirmed that it was cancer. And I still, at the time of the biopsy, I was um, still hoping that it was just an infection. Um, they called us back to tend to Kate after she, as she was waking up and I hadn't re heard from the doctor yet, so I was still hopeful until the anesthesiologist, as we were tending to Kate, said, oh yes, it was cancer, and I about collapsed. I was scared that, that Kate would be afraid. She just had an aunt that died of cancer, and so um, instead of telling Kate right away that she had cancer, we told her her bones were sick. I guess as you second grade, she didn't really know what cancer was, so we just, how our parents described it to us was that she was sick, like really sick. And then um, on to a Broviac placement and, and chemo. My family shaved my head, my uncle's head, and my dad's head. They did it in support of me. A couple days later, whatever hair I had left on my head started coming out in chunks. I remember if I was ever mad at someone, I would just take out a chunk of my hair and throw it at them. Juvenile, I know, but <laughs> effective to get them away from you. Um, every, every time Kate had a treatment, chemotherapy, she had to, it was involved a, a hospital stay from anywhere from three to five days. And also she, um, with some of the can chemos, it caused her her blood counts to go down and so low that she would have to go in for, because of an infection or just to get um, a blood transfusion or platelets. So that was hard on the rest of our family. Fortunately, I was a stay-at-home mom and um, her dad uh, worked from home, so that was that helped. I stayed with Kate during the day in the hospital and he would stay at night with her. Fortunately, we have a very close family, um, extended family, and they were uh, they were always ready to uh, come and help with Kate, stay with Kate in the hospital or at home. Um, they were they prayed for Kate. Uh, we had support from our friends and neighbors who brought us meals every evening uh, when Kate was in the hospital, so we didn't have to cook, which was good because I can't cook. You still have to do something for your leg, whether it be do the uh, reconstruction like you had with the metal knee replacement. Uh, some people have an amputation. So at a young age, you get a lot of growth remaining. So you're going to get taller and your legs are going to grow, but the metal implants aren't made to really grow with you unless you put in like the special implant that you have now. So that's one problem. So you got to get your, your legs equal length or close to it. You had a very stiff knee where your, your knee really wasn't bending or straightening from all the surgeries and the previous infections. So we had to get your knee working again. And then on top of it, um, the infection reared its head again. So those are really serious problems. And with all those things in, in, um, going on, the risk of an amputation or losing your leg is very, 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 very high. 
So the fact that you, you're here right now and your leg is actually attached to your body and it's working and um, to be able to get around, that's, I think, a great victory. And now, um, as of um, next month, she will be cancer-free. It will be five years out. She told me that she's cancer-free, and I was like, yay! She does have echocardiograms to make sure that the, there is, isn't any damage done to her heart with all this, the chemotherapies. Um, she did have to have her ears checked because some of the chemo does affect your hearing. Um, she has had lengthenings, leg lengthenings. Um, she, she walks very, she uses her le leg very well. It's very strong. Um, her physical therapists and doctors are very impressed of how, how hard she worked to get that leg um, strengthened and working as well as it is. I think um, a lot of doctors and a lot of physical therapists are very impressed with how, how hard she's worked and how, how well she can walk. Uh, she had to keep working and we'd say, just, just get through this and then there would be something else. You know, just get through the chemo and then there was the infection and just get through this. And then she was so weak she couldn't use her leg and just get through this. And then there was another, another shot or another chemo or another infection. And she, she was a trooper through it all. She, it wasn't easy, it wasn't, and it wasn't fun at all, um, but she made it through and um, she's, she's a strong, strong person today. Kate walks with a little bit of a limp but for the most part, she's a healthy, happy, normal, if you can call it that, teenager. Uh, and so feels like it's in the past now. I think she expects, expects people to be tough because she had to be.